is already in the works. And I'm not talking about the next James Bond movie, no, no, no. It was announced that Duncan Jones, the man who bought us uh, Moon and Source Code, has signed on to direct the action-packed uh, story of the James Bond creator himself, Ian, uh, Ian Fleming. Sorry. Uh, Jones had said this about getting the, uh, the job and about the project, saying Fleming lived through one of the most per uh, pureless periods sorry, <laughs> in world history in a position that allowed him a unique vantage point of all players, all the stakes. He witnessed true heroism firsthand, and he saw the evil men could do. Then, uh, when the work ended, he went off to write fiction. The essential question for me is, where did Ian Fleming end and Bond begin? So there you go. The movie is based, uh, based on an Andrew Likett biography. Uh, Ian Fleming, the man behind James Bond. Uh, jo uh, Jones is currently casting the pro and production... Sorry, I'm speaking a little faster than I usually do. Uh, Jones is currently casting, and production is slated to begin later this year. Uh, also, the untitled, bio, the untitled biopic is the only film to be given full support by the Ian Fleming estate. Um, for those of you who don't know what that means, get a life. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, um, the Ian Fleming estate, of course, is where, you know, the, the property and the, that belongs to him. And unfortunately, Ian Fleming is, you know, no longer around. Uh, so, uh, all the rights, you know, that he has are belong to his estate, which, of course, uh, the people in his estate own. So, there you go. Uh, moving on. Tom Cruise is attached to star in a remake of the Magnific... <laughs> Here we go. Stuff I can't pronounce right. Uh, Magnificent Seven. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the classic 1960 uh, western about a uh, group of seven gunslingers. Who must protect a small community of regular folk? That's how they. That's how they. That this is how they they they, they uh, wrote it up. So I'm just copying paste, folks. Anyway, uh, Variety, Variety, sorry, uh, reports that MGM project has no director or even a writer yet. But with Tom Cruise on board, uh, the studio is set to currently be looking for a uh, script writer for the movie. They also said that Cruise has. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Cruz has uh, long been interested in settling up for the the remake, though the project is still a long ways off and is not uh, in Cruz's immediate plans. Of course, Cruz has a number of projects in the works already, uh, some of which we've uh, mentioned here on the show before, and some of which... Uh, oh, uh, he has one of them called One Shot and another one with uh, the Tron Legacy director. I can't remember the title of the name. Anyway... Moving on. Uh, the original Magnificent Seven was actually a remake of itself of an Akira Kurosawa's 1990, uh, 1954 but yeah, uh, film Seven Samurai. Uh, the, the remake, the western one, of course, stalled the Yor Brenner, Steve McQueen, Charles Bronson, uh, James Corborn, uh, Robert Vaughn, Brad Dexter, uh, in the 19, of course, the 1960 film. Uh, the film spawned three sequels and a TV show. Back in the day, when westerns were, when westerns were good, I'm not saying westerns now aren't good. I'm just saying, you know, that's the that was a time period for westerns, and it, it kind of feels like westerns are coming back in a way. Uh, do you agree with me, you know, person that's not there? I'm asking myself my own question. But for all you for all you folks listening at home, do you, do you, or you know wherever you are, do you think westerns are coming back? Because I would I would really like a westerns coming back. I'm a big westerns fan, so I think that'd be pretty cool if it came back. I think some people would agree with me on that one. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, financing is now locked for the Eng English language remake of John Woo's The Killer. Uh, Cha Young Fat was the original star. Uh, the movie will be directed by John H. Lee, which is, uh, he himself is a foreign director, hasn't done anything here in the States, so take that as you may. Uh, casting for the lead roles is still up in the air, and shooting will begin in Toronto later this year. The synopsis for the remake, it is set in present-day Los Angeles. Jeff, a, high, a highly skilled contract killer, falls in love with the only living witness in his latest job, a female, a female singer who was blinded during the hit. Meanwhile, Detective Vaughn, uh, the cop assigned to investigate Jeff's hit, has a chance to save his reputation when he correctly and faithfully suspects Jeff to be the killer. But after witnessing Jeff's display of ha uh, display an act of heroism, sorry, Vaughn's uh, perceptions of right and wrong begin to change. Uh, this is interesting. I mean, I, I've saw, I've seen the original Killer. I'm a big John Woo fan. If you guys didn't hear the last show that I did, 
you guys know I'm a big John Woo fan, so you know, that's not take this lightly. Um, and uh, the fact that you know they were making his movies here in America is is just, I don't know. I feel kind of you know if they do it right, then okay. Uh, there actually was a rumor when this first uh, got out that uh, the star of The Good, The Bad, and The Weird, I don't know if anybody has seen The Good, The Bad, and The Weird. If you haven't seen The Good, The Bad, and The Weird, you really should. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a Korean um, kind of spaghetti western. Uh, it's a really good movie. One of the guys, the kind of one of the, the good guys in the film, uh, was attached to star as the, the lead character, which is Jeff. <clears throat> and... Um, that of course now this is this is brand new. They did a release statement. They actually named the the actress who would play um, the the leads the the female singer, but she hasn't really known here in the states that well, so I'm not even gonna bother saying her name. Um, or she hasn't done anything big that is uh, here in the states that people will know her for. So that's why I'm not you know, saying who she is. But uh, if they if he's still attached, I would be I would be really really into this project. But whoever they bring in, hopefully uh, they can do a good job. Uh, and we'll talk about John Wu, I think, later in the show as well. Yes, we will. Uh, in a chat, in a chat, or interview, whatever you want to call it, uh, with Empire Online uh, last week at Cannes, Tom Hardy was asked about the status of Mad Max 4 Fury Road uh, and said uh, whether or not it's going to be made soon or anything like that. And he said, your guess is as good as his. Uh, we keep moving forward that around. We keep moving forward that around. Yeah, we keep moving forward that around. That's how. That's how he said. Uh, who knows when when it will come out? I've been uh, I've been on standby for two years, but it's all part of it. I'm kind of, a, it's kind of a cool thing to do to be exclusive with dates and all that. Uh, George Miller, of course, the man who uh, directed all the old ones, uh, the original ones. Uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, still remains attached to direct the uh, reboot. That's being described. It's being described as a reboot slash sequel to his apocalyptic uh, Australian Road Warrior series. Uh, Hardy couldn't help to poke, but poke fun at the long-delayed project, saying it's going to be a year of filming, then six months. It was going to be a year of filming and six months, and now we're supposed to be doing it in six days. It's a musical. We're going to go around shopping centers in a little wagon and sing songs. People are expecting people were expecting big, but we're not going to give them. But we're going to give them small. It will be live, free. Running musical and it come and it's coming to a place near you. Ah, uh, you gotta love Tom Hardy poking at some poking fun at a project. It is. It's interesting. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, it gives him humor. Um, yeah, I was, I was, I was actually kind of excited when they first announced they were doing another Mad Max movie, because uh, I think everybody wants to forget about what was it, Thunderdome. Nobody wants to remember that. Yeah, I can barely remember the title of the movie. Uh, but uh, with Tom Hardy attached, you know, this is kind of the this was supposed to be one of the first big projects. That Tom Hardy was supposed to be involved in before Inception came out, and then and or after Inception came out, and it was never made. So I don't know. So who knows? Uh, last August, it was announced that Ridley Scott would be would be directing a new Blade Runner movie. Uh, he's been developing the film, and it's now confirmed to be a sequel because there was some doubt on whether it was going to be a sequel or it was going to be a prequel or you know a spinoff or some tie-in or something. Didn't matter. But now it's being announced as a sequel. Uh, while putting the final touches on Prometheus, which comes out in, uh, later this uh, later this year, actually in a couple weeks, uh, and it's now been announced that Scott will be bringing in an old friend to help him with Blade Runner, and that old friend is Hamilton Fetcher, who wrote the original Blade Runner and is in talks to develop and write the sequel with their gro- of their groundbreaking 1982 film. Uh, no details are given plot-wise, other than the fact that it will be a new fi- that the new film will take place some years after the first film concluded. Uh, the press release mentions that uh, Thatcher and Scott initially intended Blade Runner to be the first in a series of films incorporating the themes and characters found in the Philip uh, K. Dick novel *Do and Jordan's Dream of Electric Sheep*, but circumstances kept uh, kept the film further from being uh, being made. Uh, Scott himself confirmed that Harrison Ford won't be returning to the sequel, and best case scenario, filming won't begin any uh, won't begin any sooner than 2013. Uh, Scott is Scott is next to set to direct Cormac McCarthy's scripted drama The Counselor, uh, which begins production next month. Scott is also set to be keen on a sequel to Prometheus, should the film do well this summer, which I can answer that right now, and I think a lot of us can answer that. Yes, it will do well because a lot of us are really, uh, really, really excited for that project. 
Uh, so, there you go. Anyway. Uh, last news item. Uh, no, we'll, uh, yeah, last news item before we go to break. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is being uh, eyed for the lead in Lion, Ga in Lion Gates and Summit Pictures' reboot of Highlander. The character is currently, uh, the act of the character, the, the, the actor Ryan Reynolds is currently on top of a studio's wish list uh, for the remake. And Variety reports that both parties are currently in serious negotiations for the film. However, it's still unclear if, if an official offer has been made. Uh, insiders claim that Reynolds is still weighing other offers and that he would end up pursuing another project. Uh, Juan Carlos for, uh, Fresnadio, I pronounced that wrong, uh, he directed, he just directed a movie called Intruders with Clive Owen, and I believe he was a director, uh, for 28 weeks later. Yeah. Uh, is set to direct the film, which has yet to be paired with any other plot details. The original series, for those who don't know about the original Highlander, uh, followed an immortal swordsman who battled other immortal swordsmen, uh, through centuries. It also spinned off a, uh, TV series that uh, I think some people uh, really love. And by some people, I mean my sister. Uh, anyway, uh, Ryan Reynolds, I think it would be interesting. I mean, you know, we haven't really heard Ryan Reynolds' name um, ever since, you know, the terrible year he had last year with Green Lantern and, and the change-up, which to a lot of people were considered uh, failures in the box office. Um, but, uh, you know, and he has, you know, I, I don't know what he has lined up. I know, you know, Deadpool is, like, there because they've been wanting to make a Deadpool movie for years. And for some reason, they haven't made it yet. Um, and, you know, but if he does Highlander, I think it would be pretty interesting to see him, you know, take on uh, the Highlander franchise. I think some people may be angry. Not angry, but, you know, not excited that his name is attached to the Highlander series. I think it would be interesting. I think it's an interesting choice. Um... If they don't go with him, you know, I, I would love to see the kind of the other names on that wish list because he's the only one on there, but he's on the top, so I don't know who else they have in I don't know who else they have in mind. Um, so yeah, you know what? Let's do one more news story before uh, we go to break. Uh, this one actually, this one's actually pretty interesting because uh, we've talked about this uh, here on the show sometimes. Uh, well, it's been seven long years since this film, since the first one came out. It's a little teaser. Let's go to break. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, uh, but uh, the sequel to Sin City, which is called Sin City, A Dame to Kill For, has a release date, which didn't have a release date originally, but now it does, and the release date is October 4th, 2013. So next year, in October, we'll be seeing a sequel to uh, Sin City. Robert Rodriguez and Frank Miller once again uh, co-direct the sequel, which is scheduled to begin shooting this summer in Austin, Texas. Uh, so far, the returning cast members are Mickey Work, who played uh, Marv in the first one, and Rosario Dawson, who played Gail. Also returning is uh, Jessica Alba, who played uh, Nancy Callahan in the first movie. Uh, Sin City 2 will feature a highly sty uh, the highly stylized black and white format, like the first one did, but this time the movie will be rendered in everybody's favorite format, 3D. That's right, another 3D movie. Um... <laughs> I can just I can just hear the, the moans of everybody going no why uh, anyway um, I think it's interesting I mean I, I, again I, I was a fan of Sin City and I know a lot of people are a fan of Sin City and um, yeah, everybody's wanted a sequel to Sin City uh, for a long time and I being one of them uh, but now it's finally being made and I have to say the whole you know the fact that they're doing, they're doing it black and white again is extremely cool and. When I saw that they were doing it in 3D, I think I might have been the only person uh, that that was like, that could be interesting. Because think about it. Uh, the black and white format, the 3D, I mean, they had like the rain aspect uh, of, you know, it was raining for some of Sin City uh, in the movie. And I think that would kind of look cool in 3D, uh, you know, the black and white rain. You know, and some of the co the visual colors like the reds that always popped out, um, uh, the yellow with you know with the certain uh, what was his name? I forgot his name, his real name. I don't want to call him what he is because I'm uh, I think I used my 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 bastards. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I think it'd be interesting. I I really do think the 3D would probably be an interesting aspect to the film. I didn't say it would be better if it was in 3D. I'm just saying it'd be interesting. Uh, but anyway, 